All right, guys. Welcome to Dropping Dimes, Episode 9, brought to you by Four Corner Sports. I'm your host, Flavio Oriana. So we got a lot to talk about. All right, so we got a major trade. I'm going to start off with that. Then we got an extension. Uh, one, of, one of the best players in the league just got a two-year extension. And then we'll break down, you know, stuff that uh, has transpired since the last time we spoke on this channel about the NBA. So, <clears throat> kicking off the, the, the show, Russell Westbrook just got traded. Yes, he just ended up getting traded. No, he did not go to the Knicks. And we actually said this in the last episode on where he might end up going. Now, it was a slight rumor at the time, but the Washington Wizards were extremely, you know, well, now we, now we know that he got traded to Washington, but the Wizards were interested in, uh, what's it called, Russell Westbrook. Considering that Westbrook was disgruntled, he didn't want to be in Houston, didn't want to be second fiddle to James Harden, which I kind of understand because of the way that James Harden's James Harden style of play is. Well, now the Houston Rockets traded Russell Westbrook to Washington, D.C. in exchange for John Wall. Now, Houston gets John Wall and a first-round draft pick, and the Wizards get Russell Westbrook. Now, I think this is a phenomenal trade. You know, me and Hob were talking about it, you know, in the last episode. But I, cer- I, I firmly believe that this is a big win for Washington as opposed to Houston. And here's why. Washington is going to get Russell Westbrook, all right? He's still in his prime. Sure, he, he's not a shooter, and he's kind of regressed in that category. But you're going to pair him along with Bradley Beal. You have Davis Berton, who under the re-signing this offseason. And then you got the rook- you got that rookie from last year, and I think Thomas Bryant at center. Now, Thomas Bryant, in my opinion, he's a top 20 center, all right? Maybe top 25. That's kind of saying, saying nicely that he's okay, if not below average, but you pair him up, you pair Russell Westbrook with Bradley Beal and Davis Berton. Now, they got to fix the bench. I mean, they need a little, they need more depth. Russell Westbrook reunites with Scotty Brooks. Uh, Bradley Beal and Westbrook are instant dynamic right there because even though John Wall and Russell Westbrook are very similar in the way that they play, I'm always going to favor Westbrook just because he has more explosiveness. He has more heart. You know, he makes, you know, better plays as opposed to John Wall. But here's the caveat. Westbrook, you know, can't shoot just like John Wall. But sometimes he, you know, he'll take too many unnecessary shots. And he'll take shots away from Bradley Beal. So that's going to be the only caveat with that. I still feel that the trade favors Washington, even though they had to give up a first-round draft pick. But, now the problem with with Houston is, like, sure, John Wall is going to be coming back, but what version of John Wall are we going to get? Are we going to get the John Wall when he was blowing by people, being explosive? No, I don't think so. Are we going to get the John Wall that we saw two years ago? Maybe not. I mean... We might get a very diminished John Wall. The reason why this trade ended up happening is because both these salaries pretty much matched up. And the reason why Washington gave up that first round draft pick is because Houston wants to kind of re you know, kind of get better through the draft. They have James Harden there. And with those two max contracts, they're not gonna be able to get, you know, a really good player through the through free agency. Now, John Wall come, goes to Houston. This is going to be the first time he plays for a, a different team. This will be Westbrook's, uh, what's it called, third team. Played for Houston one year. The year before that, he played for OKC, you know, from the start of his career up until that point. John Wall reunites with, honestly, I, I believe this is his best friend, you know, even when he was in college. He re- reunites with Boogie Cousins. So they have that com- camaraderie with one another, if I said that correctly. Um... They'll be able to gel properly. I think they'll be able to do pick and roll and stuff like that. I think it might be able to work out well. Uh, Houston is, in my opinion, they're taking a huge chance on John Wall. Um, very low risk on uh, DeMarcus Cousins. I mean, kind of gave it away. 
Marcus Cousins ended up signing a contract with the Houston Rockets, so they got their little version of, of a big three. I guess you could say it's really not that much of a, you know, I can't really see how they're going to really improve, in my opinion. But I think that for Washington, for the Wizards, this is going to be huge for them. They're going to be relevant, in my opinion. They're going to make the playoffs. Are they going to be able to make it past the first round? I don't think so. I think this first year, I think they'll just make the playoffs. This is good because at least it holds Bradley Beal to, you know, in Washington. Now, it doesn't seem like Bradley Beal is going to be on the trading block. The fact that Washington made this trade seems like they're in. They're going to be content on wanting to hold on to Bradley Beal as long as possible. Obviously, he's the future, well, he, or the future, present, whatever you want to call it. They want to build around him. Having Russell Westbrook, you know, be a floor general, getting Bradley Beal open shots, I think that's going to be very, very key. Bradley Beal might be able to have a higher three-point percentage. Maybe, most likely, his uh, points per game is in a decrease. It's only, it's only you know, what's it called? Uh, it's only likely, considering that you have that, that figure that is Russell Westbrook, he's probably going to end up scoring you about 20-plus points a game, so... Maybe Bradley Beal might average anywhere between, give or take, like 25 to 27 points. Westbrook with 20 plus. And then you have Davis Berton probably scoring you anywhere between 15 to, I would, no, I, w- I would say about like 13 to 16 points a game. That's what it's going to really come down to for their victory. As for Houston, I mean, it's still going to be the James Harden show. I mean, we don't know what's going to happen with, uh, with John Wall. Remember, he tore his Achilles. Achilles, Achilles, towards Achilles, you also have uh, Demarcus Cousins with a t- recovering from a torn ACL. So th- I don't know what's going to happen with Houston. Houston, in my opinion, you know the West is getting better, it's getting deeper. You know, especially with uh, CP3 getting traded to to uh, the Suns. I don't. Who knows? Who knows if uh, Houston even makes the the playoffs this year? I mean, that sounds like extreme but it, it is a strong possibility uh, moving on so yeah but let me close out that last statement with uh with that trade we'll see what happens for uh this year i think short term we're gonna see washington you know win this trade but overall i want to see you know in the next like three to five years how that first round draft pick is gonna you know hold up if houston gets some somebody really really big throughout that draft you due to Washington's pick, then obviously Houston ends up winning that that trade. But until then, as of right now, the Wizards ended up winning the trade. That's just my opinion. Uh, Moving on. So I told you that uh, a superstar ended up getting a max extension. And he is arguably, if not the best player in the world right now, LeBron James. Yes, LeBron James just got an extension. He is staying with the Lakers. He got a two-year extension for $85 million a year. I mean, $85 million. Uh, so, yes, you will see LeBron James for the next three years in a Lakers uniform. Now, people are saying that he signed that two-year extension because he is wanting to line up on where his son might be able to play once he gets drafted. It is possible. It's very possible. I mean, he's spoken about it publicly that... He would love to play with his son. Do I see something like that happening? It, me, yeah, maybe. More than likely, yeah. I mean, we we kind of have a feeling that, um, what's it called? Bronny's going to be most likely a, a first-round draft pick. Where in that first-round draft pick? I have no idea. He's still growing. He's still filling into his body. I mean, he has a nice jump shot. I mean, we'll see what happens. I mean, we're still, you know, years away from that happening. But... As for LeBron, LeBron James, I, I I like the fact that he's staying. You know, now we have clarity that look, he's gonna be here for the next three years. What was what's gonna happen next with the Lakers? Which is, uh, we kind of have an idea that Anthony Davis is gonna resign with the Lakers, right? Can't see him going to the Windy City. We can't see him going to Chicago. If he goes to Chicago, it's gonna blow my mind. It's crazy to think because look, the NBA. NBA season is going to start in about, what, three weeks? We're already on December 1st. By now, when you guys see this, it's going to be December 2nd. But, let's see. Yeah, no, I, I can't see Anthony, Anthony Davis going towards uh, 
any other team outside of the Lakers. Anthony Davis, just sign that contract, man. Whether it's two years, three years, four years, just sign the contract already. I mean, and the season kicks off on the 22nd. But anyways, um, the LeBron ends up signing that extension. So now the Lakers, you know, have an idea that he's going to be there. It, I think it helped out a lot that the Lakers won this title because, you know, if they, if he didn't, if the Lakers and LeBron did not win that title, who knows if if uh, LeBron James signs that extension? Who knows? And also, if he didn't sign that extension, all year long we were going to be hearing from the media, LeBron, what are you going to do? Are you going to opt in see a player option or are you going to opt out? We're going to hear that all year long. Now that he signs, we don't have to deal with that. We don't have to deal with that question. I know people like dealing with the with the unknown, whether he's going to do this, whether he's going to do that. LeBron, you know, everybody talks about LeBron on an everyday basis. You're going to hear it from us, too, just because he's that much of a big figure. But LeBron James, yes, he signed that extension. I think the Lakers are going to be in title contention for the next, yeah, for as long as LeBron is going to be in a Lakers uniform. I, I know Father Time isn't eventually catch up to him because Father Time is undefeated. But I, I see that this level of LeBron James is good for at least another two more years. Into that last year, year of his contract with the Lakers, he's going to be still good, you know, good enough to make an all-star team, but he's still not going to, I don't think that he will be like best best in the world. I would say he's, he's going to be in the, in the definitely in the top five. Definitely in the top five for me to be that last year of that Laker contract. He's not, he's not going to be in the top three. All right. Um, In other words, in, in, in other news, we ended up getting... um news from the NBA what's gonna happen with the season so kicking off the season December 22nd opening night first game of the year the Los Angeles Lakers are gonna open up the season the, the, the new champs they're gonna open up the season against their rivals their their in arena rivals the LA Clippers now this is exciting because last year that ended up happening the Clippers blew them out. Cl- Lakers are, are different right now this year. They got additions with Marcus All. They got an addition of Montrez Harrell. Yes, Montrez Harrell ended up going to the Lakers. He said it was a business decision. It's partial, but from what I was hearing from all these analysts and reporters, it, the Clippers wanted to you know sever ties with Montrez Harrell. Montrez Harrell was one of the three guys that was giving the, the Clippers a hard time. They didn't like the fact that um, Kawhi Leonard and Paul George were getting special treatment. My opinion on to that, I kind of agree with Montrez Harrell. Look, Kawhi Leonard is no LeBron James. He was, was wanting to get that type of treatment. Ever since he won that second ti- his second title, when he, won, when he ended up delivering the Raptors their only title in franchise history, he kind of... Um, been acting different like as if he's like entitled to certain things i agree with montres harrell i think you know everybody should be able to show up to practice this load management kind of killed in my opinion the the clippers season but uh he said it was a business decision i think it's half true um he got offered um what was it, like an 80 million dollar contract with charlotte but clearly he showed that money wasn't you know the be all and end all things he ended up signing a very short-term contract. I think it was like, what, two years, $9 million? A huge bargain compared to what Charlotte was offering him. Maybe he didn't want to go to Charlotte because he wanted to be, and when he said, you know, what's it called? He didn't want to be playing for that, um, the Charlotte franchise. But clearly he wants to get a ring. He's been dying to get a ring. Goes with with, with uh, the Lakers. Lakers improved. Um, they ended up trading uh, JaVale McGee, I think, to the Cavs, if I'm not mistaken. And, uh, yeah, I told you they got Marcus All, they got Dennis Schroeder, they got him in a trade. Um, it was a trade between Danny Green and Dennis Schroeder, sending Dennis Schroeder towards OKC, and then OKC ended up uh, trading him towards Philly. So, Danny Green's officially in Philly. Um, Rondo is in Atlanta, so the whole, the whole Lakers team is a little bit different now. And also Dwight Howard is in Philly, too, joining uh, Danny Green. But... Now with this Lakers squad a little bit different, it actually looks better in my opinion. I mean, you have, what's it called? Montrezl Harrell. You have 
um, Marcus O, who's an excellent passer. I mean, this guy can play make too. You have Dennis Schroeder, who can be honestly he, he can start for them. I mean, LeBron doesn't need to be a point guard, um, be a primary ball handler, or you could put Dennis Schroeder, you know, you know, leading the second unit. Who knows? I mean, the Lakers have tons of options to do, you know, play with. So uh, right there, you, you really upgraded, you know, immensely. And then obviously you still have LeBron James. You have Kyle Kuzma, which I'm surprised they did not trade at all. Um, they brought back up uh, what's it called, Markeith Morris. Anthony Davis is, is expected to sign that contract, so Anthony Davis is going to still be on that team. So it's interesting, you know, how the Lakers squad actually improved from last year, considering that they ended up winning the title. And with the Clippers, I don't know. I think the Clippers ended, ended up bombing free agency. They lost Montrezl Harrell to the Lakers. Um, they're thinking. They're still thinking about uh, severing ties with Lou Williams by trading him. I don't know who's going to be able to take that. And hearing that there's rumors that they want to trade Lou Williams for Terry Rozier. I don't know why would you do that. I mean, Lou Williams, in my opinion, is one of the best ever to come off the bench. I mean, the amount of scoring that this guy does, you can't unmatch that. The only thing I'm thinking of is just that his defense is not that great. But I don't think Michael Jordan wants to trade trade Terry Rozier. Terry Rozier is one of Michael Jordan's favorites. But anyways, um, you s- I feel like they bomb free agency. I mean, the only thing that they ended up upgrading, in my opinion, is they upgraded from Montres Harrell and they got Serge Ibaka. I mean, Serge Ibaka, he could hit you a three. He, you know, he's good at the mid-range. He could, he could block. I mean, that's why they ended up calling him an okay, he, he blocker. And uh, that's going to be the first game of, uh, to start off the year. I mean, I right, right now, I already favor the Lakers. The way that that this these current rosters are being constructed, I got the Lakers winning by like at least nine points. I got them winning plus nine at, at this rate, and then going into that second game and that doubleheader of opening night, you got the return of Kevin Durant, and, and you know first time playing with the Brooklyn Nets, teaming up with his best friend Kyrie to take on his former team, the Golden State Warriors. Now, this would be, in my opinion, a huge game if Klay Thompson did not get hurt. I would have loved to see how that was going to go through. I would have loved it. But you got to work with what you got for him. I mean, now you're going to get the... You're going to see James Wiseman from what's it called? The Warriors make his debut. Steph hasn't played since um, he ended up uh, hurting his wrist. You're going to have... Andrew Wiggins on that squad. You're going to have... Oh, what's his name? They ended up trading for him. Played for the Suns. I I, I can't remember his name. I'm not, I'm not going to call his by his nickname. His, his nickname, in my opinion, is dumb. But you have the Warriors versus the Nets. That should be a good matchup. It just sucks that we ended up uh, losing out on Klay Thompson. Klay Thompson would have been great. We would have been able to see you know the how the Warriors were going to gel and mesh. But, you know, we have Nets and uh, Warriors. And then we also have the Christmas Day schedule uh, released. I'm going to look over here on so I can show you guys. So Christmas Day schedule is released. Um, where is it? Yeah, so we got one, two, three, four, five. So five games on Christmas Day. So we got something to, to look at on Christmas Day. Starting off is going to be Pelicans at Heat. The Yes, the New Orleans Pelicans are going towards Miami to face the Miami Heat. Zion Williamson and the Pelicans are going to go face Jimmy Butler and Bam Adebayo and the Miami Heat. That should be a good one to start off to Christmas Day at 12 o'clock. Going at 2.30, Steph and the Warriors are going to go to Milwaukee and face Giannis and the Bucks. Oof, I mean, can't, you know, will Giannis be facing his... Possibly new team in the future. I mean, look, the Warriors, they're, um, they're known to swing hard in free agency. Maybe they make a run for Giannis in the offseason. Who knows? That's if Giannis isn't signed that, that Supermax. And then at 5 o'clock, you got the, the Brooklyn Nets going to Boston facing the Boston Celtics. That should be good. I like that matchup a lot. Jason Tatum is a star, in my opinion, on the verge of becoming a superstar. Same thing with Jalen Brown. You also got Marcus Smart still there, and then you and then you get having to face Kyrie and KD. Oof, 
Oof, that's gonna be good. That's gonna be good for Christmas Day. And then um, eight o'clock, you got the Mavericks, Luka Doncic and uh, Chris S. Porzingis versus LeBron James and the L.A. Lakers. That should be a really good one. And then lastly, to cap it off, the Clippers might be able to get their revenge. They're they're at the ten thirty slot. The L.A. Clippers are facing the Denver Nuggets. Clippers ended up blowing a 3-1 lead. Yes, they ended up blowing a 3-1 lead. I will say it again. The Clippers ended up blowing a 3-1 lead to the Denver Nuggets. So will Paul George and Kawhi Leonard, you know, get their revenge on Christmas Day against the Denver Nuggets? Who knows? Who knows? I mean, Denver looks good. Denver, Denver looked pretty good in the playoffs. I mean, you saw in ascending Michael Porter Jr., you saw how great Jamal Murray ended up looking in, in those playoffs. Same thing with, with Jokic. Jokic never disappoints at all. So I'm very, very excited to see how this this Christmas Day is going to look upon. It's not feeling whatsoever. I'm very excited. And then lastly, to close things out, I mean, um, it's just like small news. Uh, Clippers ended up waving uh, Joaquin Noah. So it's most likely hinting that this is going to be the last we ever see Joaquin Noah. Joaquin Noah was very famous for playing on, on the Chicago Bulls. He ended up winning like a defense, defensive player of the year. Won a national title with Florida. And as for that, also, um, LeVar Ball must be really, really excited just because of the fact that all three Ball brothers are officially in the NBA. Yes, LeAngelo Ball is with is with the Lakers. You got LaMelo Ball in Charlotte. And then you got Lonzo with the Pelicans. Wow, I mean... Three brothers in the NBA. I think last time we seen something like that was uh, the Plumlee brothers. But yeah, I mean, you you can't really say much. I mean, that's credit to LeVar Ball. I mean, for whatever you want to think of him, credit to LeVar Ball. He's got all three brothers in the NBA. That's pretty remarkable in my opinion. But until then, guys, look, that's going to cover everything for Dropping Dimes. Hob, you know, Hob is most likely going to be able to come into the shows in January. It's been really, really tight, really, really busy. But until then... I'll be covering the shows. All right, guys. So I will talk to you guys later. Until then, peace, guys. Have a good one.